Lots of good looking honey. They're already starting to cap the top of this one. Those of you who like to watch the honey videos, you're gonna love this hive later this year. Hi, welcome to the Daddy Curbs Farm. Today we're gonna do some more beekeeping. We're gonna get into these hives and see if we can split them. Uh, it's a night, it's overcast, but it's, it's not too breezy and the temperature is pretty good. And I have some nuke boxes ready to go. Part of my challenge with doing the split is that the advice is that once you're done with the split, you take the new colony in your nuke box <coughs> two miles or more away from this bee yard. I don't really have anywhere to take it, so we're gonna try a different method. Something I did in a previous year, and it worked out okay. We're gonna try it again. This particular nuke box has a, a floor built into it and a small entrance. So we're gonna face that entrance to, I just changed my mind, we're gonna face it over to this side. But we are gonna face it toward the hive. When we're all finished with getting the five frames that we need out of this hive and put into the nuke box, the end result is that this hive is also going to be facing this hive. The concept is that the entrances will be facing each other and the bees that leave and come back will have to decide which hive to go into. Hopefully there's a fair split of bees that choose both hives. The reason beekeepers take a new split two miles or more away from the original hive is so that the worker bees, the field bees, don't um, only choose to come back to the original hive, leaving the split unattended. I got a lot of weeds growing up in the bee yard. I need to bring the scythe back out here and clean it up. See there's some bees on the lid and I always just take a glance, make sure there's no queen taking a little vacation up there. You can see that big fat drone right there. That's a male bee. You can tell the drones easily from the other bees, the worker bees, the female bees, because their eyeballs are really big and they touch on the top of their head. Where the female bees have just enough of a little gap between their eyes. It's a little easy. It's, it's one way to tell if you're, if you're curious, is that a drone or a queen? Well, that's one way to know. Bees are looking really nice here. So far I don't think they need a lot of smoke, but I'm just kind of prepping the area, making sure they don't get too excited here. When you beekeep, you don't want to do a lot of talking either. That, that kind of gets them stirred up, but uh, I talk so I can share. We're looking, for five, we're looking for four frames that have brood, baby bees, and some resources, so pollen, nectar, honey. I don't expect to see a lot of that in the top box on this one. In fact, I don't want them because this is not a deep box. This is a medium box. You can see the size here compared to the size here. That's a deep box. Uh-oh. We got some some burr comb they were building out. It even has some larva on it. We don't want that type of comb, so we're gonna have to clean this off, hoping that they uh, start correcting their, their build. Sometimes I blow the smoke on myself just to change the, the smell. That comb that they were building up, this is the top of the, of the uh, frames from the bottom, and they were building between the two frames, so they have uh, they have comb here with, you can see the white larva. They were making baby bees there. And then I took the comb off of the top, or off the bottom of that other frame, and put it down here, just scrape it off. You have a little queen cup right here. Right there, you can see that little queen cup. It's empty. I need a full-time beekeeping camera person so you guys can see every angle. Hanging those up on my frame hanger. You can see again they had a lot of that comb. They're building a lot of brood nest in between the frames. 
So again, we want to clean that up. We want to try to correct that. They have a lot of brood nest up in the top box there. It's possible the queen's up here. I'm trying to keep an eye out for her. I just don't want to accidentally drop her on the ground or, you know, anything that would damage the, the hive in that way. You have a lot of good pollen coming into the hive. I am going to get in here and try to clean up the tops of those. I'm going to just scrape the tops of these and get that comb, that burr comb with that larva in there and just get it out. I would feel better about not destroying bee larvae, but when they put it between the frames, mm -hmm. there's not a lot you can do about it, you, except for just never get into your hive. Oh, found the queen. So now that I know the queen is in this top box, I don't know if I can get a good view of her. You can see her, she's running right down that left side, or right side. I can try to put this top box over here knowing she's in it, or I can try to catch her in a queen cage. That way I, I know that she's safe. I'm going to try that. Let's see if I can find her again. She was on this frame, but I think she got away from me. See, here's some more wonky comb that we need to clean up. We don't want that comb going that direction, so we're just going to scrape that out. Some on the other side, too. Now, the comb that they have that's going nicely, I just left that and uh, took out the, the stuff that was sticking out the wrong direction. All right, my guess is that that queen moved on down, down into the lower box because she moved across the frames. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't see her anymore, so I think she went down. We have a little queen cup right here that, that is empty. I'm just going to scrape that off. this to a table that I have set up over here and scrape it off so they can clean the resources out of it and at some point I'll come back and collect that wax. Now I can clean the tops of these frames off, get that burr comb out of here. And now that I'm down into the deep boxes, I'll be looking for those frames that are a good resource for the, the split. I'm going to see if you can see this. So this is a part of a, a comb. And if it'll focus, you see those little tiny specks that looks like rice almost? Those are the eggs. That's what eggs look like down in the bottom of comb. That's what you're looking for when I say I'm looking for eggs. I'm looking for those guys. Hopefully you can see that. Otherwise you get larva that looks like this, like the gooey yellow or uh, white and then eggs that look like that. Alright, let's see how many frames of brood we can find here. I have five empty frames in the nuke box ready to switch out. And this is a good frame of comb on one side, empty on the other. So I could put that one in there just as something for them to build onto and expand on. I'd like to get three frames of, of brood nest. This has a lot of nectar and pollen. So that is a, a good frame of resources. When you have two deep frames, let me just check, make sure. I don't think the queen is over here, but you never know. When you have two deep boxes, it gives you more options uh, to, to take resources from when you split a hive. So there's a good one with some brood, some empty, leaving some empty around the outside of the brood nest. 
I'm going to put this one over into my nuke box. Now I'm going to put that one right in the middle. Another good frame of brood. But I, I'm checking to make sure I know where the queen is. I don't know where she is, but I would like to know before I start moving frames around. I just took a stinger through the glove. They don't often sting through these gloves, but sometimes they do. And uh, one of the advantages is I got the stinger out easily because you can just pull on the glove and that pulls the stinger out. But once they sting, then the others are alerted to a, a danger and I'm going to get more stings. So far I found four really nice frames of brood in this middle box. I put two down in here and I'm leaving two. Uh, I still have several frames to go to check out. There's a third one I'm going to go ahead and move over. So that's three frames of brood. Now I need to uh, put two frames of resources in there. I'm going to put this one in here because it has lots of uh, nectar and pollen. And I have one spot left in here. I'm going to try to find a good frame of uh, just pollen and nectar. It's really empty anyway, so I'm going to scoot this one that has a lot of good drone comb. Just scoot it over to the edge. insert an empty one I think I'm going to use this one in the nuke box it has lots of good pollen and nectar lots of good comb so now I get to put this one back together The two frames here are full of brood nest. I'm going to slide those to the middle. I'm going to put an empty one in here. One that's more full, that has a little more resources on it. And then fill in the uh, remaining spaces with three empty frames. Now I am going to pull this, pull this box so I can look down into that bottom box just to finish the inspection. I like to look at whenever that happens. I don't like destroying a comb that has larva, but I look at it anyway to see if I can see any mites in there. I've never actually seen one. I don't want to see them, but you know, I kind of I kind of want to know what they look like in there. By pictures online, I've seen them. I know that the uh, the mites live down in there with the larva. I don't see any. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to pull any more frames. I'm going to leave this one alone. I'm going to put it back together. I got what I needed out of it for this purpose. I'm going to turn this around so the entrances are facing each other.
putting the lid on the, the split. And then putting this hive back together. Just use a little bit of smoke to uh, encourage them to get off the edge. Most of them, I hope. These bees are very unhappy right now. Oh, this was less than ideal as far as the uh, the temperament of the bees. They, I, I squashed a few in the process and that gets them riled up. And whenever I take a sting, like I said, that encourages more uh, of that pheromone, that defense pheromone, and then they just get more upset. And But what we ended up with is the main hive turned sideways toward the split. The goal is, and hopefully it works, that when the bees come in from the field, they'll go in between here. It's not going to be oriented the same way it was, so they have to make a decision, find that new entrance. Some of them will go to the left, some will go to the right, and hopefully both of those will end up successful. And I have to make a decision now as beekeeper in an apiary where the bees are stirred up. Do I uh, stoke my smoker and go for hive two, or do I call it a day? I might turn around and check out hive three because that's the hive that hasn't been inspected in a while. I am deciding to move over to hive three just temporarily. This is a hive that ended up with three medium boxes, so I can't start a nuke from this one. Uh, at least not very well, because the deep box frames are obviously deeper. And if I put these in there, there would be more space at the bottom, which the bees sometimes will correct and build comb on the bottom of that. But it could introduce problems too. So I'm just gonna get in here and inspect this hive after I get my smoker going a little bit better. Now I can tell by looking right now, this top box, without digging in too much, in this top box, a lot of nicely drawn comb, but uh, no resources really to speak of. Not a lot of bees hanging out in the top. The bottom box looks nice. So far, there's a lot of good looking bees on top. Beautiful. Good looking comb, there's just nothing on that outside. This is hive three and so far they're being nice, but with all these other bees flying around it probably won't take long before they change their mind. And here's here's a nice example of lots of nectar. Look at all that nectar in there. That's the shiny liquid you see in the bottom. A little bit of brood in this one on both sides. We have lots of pollen in this one on one side and lots of, uh, or not lots, but a little bit of good brood. Oh, that's a nice frame of brood right there. That's solid. Beautiful. So they have, they have lots of good brood in the middle here, and I'm going to assume they do in the bottom box as well. They had some, uh, some comb being built in the top box, but not a lot of resources. They have lots of pollen and nectar around the outsides of this one. There's not a lot of need or reason for me to get into this one too far. I'm just going to put it back together. I can't take, I can't make a, uh, a nuke out of this one anyway, so... We're just gonna, we're just gonna put it back together. 
I did see a beetle in there, so I'm gonna get a towel to place in here. A towel beetle trick, beetle trap. All right, hive two. This hive's building a lot of fresh new comb. This is this is like brand new stuff. You can tell because it's really, <coughs> really light in color, almost white. And this is the start of honey. This is where they're turning this frame into a frame of honey. Lots of good looking honey. They're already starting to cap the top of this one. Those of you who like to watch the honey videos, you're gonna love this hive later this year. There's my queen. Let's see if I can get my queen cage. Got her. So now I know where she is and I don't have to worry about her. I'm gonna put her on top of the hive just so they can know she's there and interact, but now I don't have to worry about where she is. This is a bunch of drone brood up here. Drone brood meaning male bee brood. Bigger cells, bigger bees. And it's right in the top of the honey box. Building nice honey on, on one side of this. Mostly empty on the other side, right up to the top of the honey box. They do have a little bit of brood on the bottom of this one. Lots of honey being made. This is, this is wonderful. So, uh, they're they're making again some some uh, comb that's in the wrong position. It's going the wrong way. So I'm going to try to clean that up. Okay, the top box is honey. That's really what they're doing up here, except for that one frame of brood. So I'm glad I found the queen because now I can take her and uh, put her down in one of the lower boxes and put a queen excluder, which looks like this, a metal wire cage frame that will keep the queen from going into that top box. So the brood that's in the top box will hatch, come out, go to work, do what they need to do, but the queen is not gonna get up there and lay more eggs. I'm gonna move this box with the queen still sitting on top of it down so I can work into those lower boxes. Cleaning some of that comb again off of the tops. And we're gonna see if we can get another nuke box started. Got a couple of jets flying over. You can see this, this nuke box doesn't have a bottom because like a regular hive, it's got a bottom board. So I can find four good frames, three good frames of brood to put over into that nuke box. 
This is a frame of possible resources, mostly in empty comb on both sides. They do have a little queen cup they're starting here. I'm gonna go ahead and pluck that out. I don't. Sometimes I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm usually conflicted. I don't know to keep them or to get rid of them. Most people say to get rid of them. This is a lot of resources. Nectar, pollen, brood. I'm gonna go ahead and put that one over into the nuke box. Same thing, nectar, pollen, and brood, lots of brood. And there's my third frame of nectar, pollen, and brood. There's a good one, lots of resources in that one. I'm going to leave that one in here. Well, I have a lot of brood. This this hive has a lot of brood. This one's going to start blowing up. It already has a lot of bees. So I'm going to put some empty frames in here. That's going to help. Okay, this is mostly resources here, so I'm going to put this one. Resources meaning uh, nectar and pollen, not so much brood. All right, that's five frames. I'm going to get this one put back together, keeping these three that have the brood toward the middle of the nest, the middle of the box. I have no reason to get down into the bottom of this hive. Um, I'm going to try to wrap this up because I've already spent too much time out here today. I'm going to put my empty frames on the on the outsides. I'm glad they're not finding an opening in my suit because now this hive is getting a little upset and I don't blame them. So I'm putting the lid over here on the new. Try to get them off the edge here. Remember, I had the queen trapped here in a little clippy queen cage. So I'm going to let her go down in here. There she goes. And she crawled right down in there. So now that I know the queen is down in here, what do they call that? Queen excluder on here. The goal is to keep that queen down in here and not in this upper box so that the brood that's in the upper box can hatch and, and uh, or emerge, I guess, not hatch, can emerge, go out, do their business. Those, uh, the comb where the hatch, I keep saying hatch, the comb where the brood was will be empty and they can clean that out and use it for honey. like the worst thing brushing them. They hate it. They're, they're not responding really well to the smoke and I don't want to blow it straight on them. 
There they did. There they did. All right. Lid or inner cover. You can see down here on the ground, they come down here and I'm not looking and so I step on some of them, which makes them upset, obviously. But uh, one of the risks to me is that they get sometimes up under my pant leg. One of the reasons I like these pants because they hug kind of tight on my boots. But I have had them where they come up my pant leg, get up in here and start stinging me on the thigh. You probably already noticed that I forgot something. What I forgot was to turn that hive around before I built it back up. So now I gotta try to twist it and face that entrance the other direction so I can put that nuke box in there and have them facing each other. my mind instead of turning that hive I decided to face that one toward it because that one was too big too heavy with my local uh, beekeeper queen provider hopefully they have queens left and I can put new queens in these new boxes or they're gonna make their own which is not always bad but it can be bad because sometimes that creates a very um, hot or aggressive hive I do hope that you got something out of that uh, in no way, shape, or form am I trying to uh, claim that I know exactly what I'm doing. I have a decent idea, but some of what I just did may be wrong. And to me, in my opinion, that's okay because what's going to happen is now I'm going to observe the results of my efforts. Uh, it may work out just fine or it may be a mistake that I'm going to learn from and now that I've recorded it and I put this out there, you can learn from it as well. I love to accept feedback, so if you have any ideas about what I just did, share in the comments below. Right now there's three active hives and uh, just split, maybe making five. We'll see how that works. Yeah, anyway, I'm just really excited that I got a chance to get out and do some beekeeping. I'm really excited that you're here with me. Here on the Daddy Curbs farm, I believe that everyone has a story, and every story counts. Your story counts because you count. You matter. And my story here, whether I'm right or wrong, it counts too. Thanks again. I'll talk to you soon.